All right. We are back with another episode of the one-on-one podcast powered by One University. This one is a little bit special because it's pretty rare that I actually am with Kathy in person and Kathy is sitting right next to me, which is going to make this episode extra special. Ryan is also to the left of me and one of our favorite returning guests, Mark Pesson, our chief learning officer. So welcome. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right, Mark. So our conversations are always wonderful. And I feel like we're always not only helping our audience, but, you know, opening them up to new things that are happening in our industry and our company. And Kathy and I have talked about this briefly, but we wanted to dedicate an episode totally to our one legacy program. And that's why we have you on. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, So let's get started. Okay. What do you want to talk about? (laughs) Well, one legacy, one legacy, like uh, maybe uh, let's just start what it is. Um, well, I mean, I think honestly, Kathy needs to really be the one to describe this program. This has been something that's been a passion project of hers for a long time. So I'd love for Kathy to really kind of share what this program is. Um, honestly, the National Association of Realtors many years ago did a survey to the membership and keep in mind the average age of the realtor then was like 52 and it was five years ago and now it's 57, Mm -hmm. if that tells you anything. And, um, they said, what do you plan to do with your business? When you retire, when you relocate, when you decide to get another job, whatever. And they said, walk away. 82% said, walk away. And they went back to those 82% and said, why? Why would you just walk away from this business? And the consensus was, well, no one's ever told me Mm. how to sell the Bob, the book of business. Book of business. I like that. Yeah. And, um, And immediately I thought, man, what an opportunity. You've got all these baby boomers that are, you know, aging out that are going to say, I want to walk away. Mm -hmm. And selfishly, I don't want Mark, our affiliates to lose that market share. Absolutely. See that market share goes back into the pie. Then we're all fighting for it again. Right. Um, So our brand is one of the few that's going to allow that Bob to transfer the book of business to actually sell. And so what this program is, is helping professionals prepare their book of business to transfer it regardless what their situation is. So that's a good point. We talked about this a little bit off camera, Mark, regardless of the situation, because I kept saying to you, it's all about agents that are at the tail end of their career, looking to retire, but that's not necessarily the case, right? Yeah. I mean, it could be that an agent might just be looking to exit the business, Mm -hmm. not necessarily retire from real estate, or they might be relocating to another market, but they still have that Bob or that book of business that we would like to see them keep within the one family and within the brokerage and we can help facilitate that process. We can help them facilitate that process through this program. And within this program, um, I mean, let's just let's just keep it as simple as possible. How does it work for uh, the agent who's giving their book of business? Like, how are they going to either pocket money or are they going to be part of the transactions in the future? Mm-hmm. So, so what is that situation for them? Yes. Okay. <laughs> e, so, e on the scan trail. Yes. Yeah. So Thank I mean, you for it, tuning it, in. It, it could be all of the above. Yeah. I mean, there's a number of ways that you can facilitate this. I think the most common that I've seen is more of a buyout or an earnout, where the existing agent that's transitioning out of the business stays involved for a period of time to help with those relationship transfers mm-hmm. and and building up the new individual that's coming on to kind of start to step into those relationships. And as a result, they still continue to get compensated for some of those transactions. And that starts to phase out over time. You you brought up a good point uh, because we're making it sound like, Kathy, you have a a hundred people in your book of business and you hand it to me and then I can go run with it. That's not the case because these are relationships that you built over the years. That's right. And so maybe elaborate on that a little bit more of like, it can't just be like a handover and, and I've wiped my hands clean of it, right? Like you have to, almost mentor this person or team or whoever you're going to be giving your book of business to. You truly, I mean, it's mentoring. It's also, um, you have to help build trust with your existing sphere of influence. So Mm -hmm. that's essentially who you're transferring over to this new person. And if you've done business with them or you have a relationship with these people, or they know your name or your brand or your face, and they've worked with you for a number of years, you can't just drop someone else in and say, this is your new agent because then that transfer is really not going to be successful. So you have to build trust with that new individual and make them a part of your team. And then ultimately you just kind of phase yourself out of the picture and the relationship continues, but that's a process that takes time. Uh, Kathy, I know that this is something that you are very passionate about and I feel like you're, correct me if I'm wrong, 
I feel like you're passionate about this because you've seen this work before. I've done it before. You've done it um, before. In, in our brokerage, we did it multiple times. The thing that I didn't anticipate that is like the gift is the millennial. Yeah. The 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 lower um, Y and the and the Z agent that's coming on board. And I mean, let's just be honest. We talk a lot about generational, mm-hmm. and um, we've talked about your frustration with some of the Zs. But man, think about if you've got this boomer or this person that's that's. Um, building their business to to transfer to sell, and then you've got this bright entrepreneurial millennial that's sitting there going, "Man, I want to do that," yeah. but we know they don't have the patience right. to build it. That's right. And, and I think we're looking at tremendous opportunity in partnering the two. And I think there's a lot that can be remixed. Mm-hmm. I think there's a lot that can be shared. You know, most of them are going to because of the size the size of the business. Most of them are going to be a transfer over time, yeah. maybe 18 to 24 months. And think the wisdom that can be gleaned mm-hmm. from that entrepreneur. We know um, we know the Zs are saying, I want to be mentored. Mm-hmm. So I think we're looking at the absolute perfect storm for this to be tremendously successful. There are going to be a lot of moving parts, Josh, that have to be in place. Number one, and Mark, I would love your guess, a percentage. What percentage of professionals do you think would have to take time to ready their business to have it in a marketable format. I would say the vast majority. The majority. The majority. I don't, it, it's, this can be done and it can be done quite well, but I would say the number of agents that I know that have done this successfully is very, very small. Mm. I think that most agents just tend to just fade away. Like they just walk away from their business, as Kathy said. But I, I think that a huge part of it is that they don't really have any plan or strategy to ready their business to transition and sell it to an up and coming agent that wants to take it over. And that's where this program comes into play is a huge part of this is helping them prepare it for sale. I used to hear the objection, well, I'm only going to be in business five more years. And I was like, well, it's going to take us that long to get you ready. Yeah. And it's not only the book of business. It's not only that um, CRM, that database that we talk so often about It's the systems. Mm -hmm. It's do you have something that can be replicated that can do do I have something that I can transfer to Josh Mm -hmm. that he literally steps in and the the customer doesn't see a difference. Right. They see a different face and they're okay with that because they trust me as they trust Josh. Exactly. But the systems have to be in place so that shit doesn't fall apart. Yeah. I mean, because that's when you're going to lose them. When they when you have that transfer and they go, man, this is not the experience I had before. Mm-hmm. Um, because that's what they're all after is, yeah. is that. So, it, I mean, again, I mean, this is something that's so exciting to me. And Mark's right. This has been a passion of mine for a long, yeah. long time. And now, and now it's just, a, it's really coming together. I think we also have to look at it from the perspective, you know, Kubo, he says, <clears throat> all of our agents are business owners, right? That's one of the things that he preaches. Think about if you were a small business owner, not in real estate, and you had four years left and you were, are you just going to wipe your hands clean of that business? No, you're going to sell it. Or hopefully. You're, or hopefully, right? If yes. it's a successful business. Because you don't want to just walk away. You want to make something and you want to also pay it forward to someone else. And so it's just a, it's interesting that we kind of have to like explain that, you know? Yes. That we actually have to create a program to, but real real estate professionals don't necessarily, as much as we train them to and preach this at Realty One Group, don't necessarily think like other business owners mm. and operators do. And I'll give you guys a great example. Um, I have an insurance company for my home and auto, and I've worked with them for years. Yep. Um, I you worked with them in Nevada. I worked with them in California. And when I moved to California, I just looked up the local company rep that represented that company and just basically said, I'm moving to California. I want to work with you. Same company. And it's a, it's a service. So yes, there's a relationship there with the insurance agent, but at the end of the day, the service is essentially the same. Sure. I didn't necessarily care who the agent was. And right. I don't mean to be diminish their value. That's not what it was. It's just the service was the same. I recently got a letter that that agent unfortunately passed away. And my, my insurance policies have now been transferred to another agent with that same company. And not to sound unsympathetic because like he was a nice guy and I right. feel bad that he passed away, but I don't necessarily care because the insurance policies are still exactly the same. The, exactly. Like nothing's changed for me. It's different with realtors. Yeah. Like that's a relationship that you develop over time and we're providing a service, but it's just, it's a different process with real estate. And I think that because the relationships matter so much to our clients mm-hmm. and they refer people to us because of the quality of the business that we, you know, the quality of the service we provide them, I think that this is a different conversation that you need to have with real estate professionals yeah. that doesn't exist in other industries. 
I agree. And not only other industries, but other brands. Yeah. I want to go back to that. We've really got a lane that others don't have. And as a content writer and a marketing specialist, you'll understand that a, another component, in addition to having the data in, in a marketable format in the CRM, um, you know, having those systems in place, it's going to be the communication. Mm-hmm. And we know that consumers at a rate of 86% say, I'd use my realtor again. Yeah. I, I, not only would I use them, I would tell friends, family, coworkers to use them. Yeah. Yet most agents, their repeat business is at about 14 to 16%. Interesting. So that communication of, hey, I'm still here, you know, it's you know over that eight year span. Mm-hmm. Right now, the tenured time in a home is about eight years, six to eight years. So over that, communicating, hey, I'm still here. I'm still your realtor. I'm still your specialist. Over that six to eight um, year period of time, that's a big thing that's embedded in here. Yeah. Is you've got to have consistent marketing. You've and, and it's not the name. What's so critical about the story you told is, if we do it correctly and if we stay top of mind. They may not care if it's Kathy or Josh. They just want to know, hey, I'm I'm the most important person in this, and they're taking care of me. Can I ask a <clears throat> a question? And this is not to plug my team, but does the brand have anything to do with it? If Mark, you are deciding that you're going to retire in your network, and your clients know you're a Realty One Group agent, and they've seen your marketing, they've seen your branding, they've seen how you are different from the other agents in that market. Does it make a difference? Like, will that, I know it's a case by case basis with each client, but like. I think it does. Okay. I mean, because I think that that's part of the consistency that they're looking for. If mm-hmm. they're already changing the individual and that relationship, if it's also a new company. Yeah. I just think that that starts to throw other variables into the mix that might throw people off. Yeah. So I really do think it matters because there's also this expectation, well, it's the same company, so the level of service should Correct. be the same. I, the yeah. training, the tools, the services should be the same. Okay. Yeah, I think that's what I was trying to ask. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And it, and it is. And it is, to me, it's that comfort of, oh, I recognize that. Yes. Whether it's the colors, um, the brand. And that's why, you know, we don't ever need to get too crazy. Right. You know, <laughs> when we revise things and when we do things. But, yeah, I think, you know, I think it's. It's just a huge opportunity. And I was just going to say, I think that's an important piece of advice. What you just touched on is if you're going to go through this transfer of ownership of a book of business, we don't recommend that you make dramatic changes to your branding, to your logos, to your slogans, like try to be as consistent as you can Mm -hmm. during that transfer period, during that honeymoon period, so that the agent, the client doesn't feel it. They don't, they don't feel it. The less they feel the change, the more successful it will be. And I'll tell you something interesting. The biggest challenge I've had in doing this is the retiring realtor Mm -hmm. falls back in love with the business. I could see that. Like they catch a second wind almost. Yes, they catch us and they're like, oh, I'm not ready to go. And we're Mm -hmm. like, but you told us you would go. Mm -hmm. And the buyer is usually ready for them to go. So we have to be mindful of a lot of moving parts. I will say this this program to be successful is going to take coaching. Yeah, It's going to take... Almost intense. Is that too strong a word? Mm -hmm. Um, Coaching. It's not going to be a fly by the seat of your pants process. Well, no. I mean, you have to look at it. Think about the episodes that we dedicate with, whether it's Savag or Nima or whoever that we have on, and we're talking about social tactics and we're talking about digital tactics. Like A lot of these people who have these successful book of businesses, they had all those practices in place. So even if I hand mark my entire book of business, if he doesn't have those practices down, it's dead weight. And so... I, I love that you're almost like you're giving them an opportunity, but at the same time they have to work for it. Right. Yeah. It's not like you're, it's not like you're getting drafted to the Lakers and you're starting like, no, you have to work for that position. Absolutely. Yeah. And we're going to build protection in there. We don't want this to be risky for that age sure. that's transferring that book of business. Because I want you to think about this. Most realtors my age probably would have sold your parents and then sold you, mm-hmm. right? So you, you, it really is a legacy, and that's what I want to transfer. I want to transfer that legacy to the next generation. Got it. So we don't, you know, we don't want the things that are risky. One thing that we will encourage when we build the program is, let's say Mark sells his book of business to someone, and there's a lot of trust there, 
and they just completely blow it. Mm -hmm. We will build a provision in, back to your initial question, we'll build a provision in that says there are going to be standards and requirements and things that um, protect this bob, and if that is violated or betrayed, it can come back to the broker for the broker to Got it. go back to the seller of the book within a period of time sure. and and resell the book of business because it, it's just too important. Yeah. No, I mean, it's... It, it, Especially with, I want to bring bring back up the the generational gap that you were kind of talking about because the baby boomer generation are the ones that really right right spearheaded mm-hmm. the real estate agent job, mm-hmm. and we are now have millennials that are part of that, and we have Gen Zers that are a part of that, and those generations have only gotten better with tech. But let's let's just call it like it is. They've gotten better with tech, but worse with people. They have like that's mm-hmm. that's just customer service. Yeah, and. So you have the generation that is the greatest with people Mm -hmm. and you have a generation that is the greatest with technology. You combine those together. And I mean, that's a winning ticket. It it is as long as the generation that's really good with tech adopts some of the habits and processes that the, the previous generation used to maintain those relationships. Cause to Kathy's point, someone like my parents who've been in the real estate for over 30 years They've done business with clients who've referred them tons of clients. They've done business with those clients' children and now even their grandchildren. Yeah. And so to transfer that book of business to someone that comes in and doesn't necessarily build those relationships or maintain that communication or that relationship building or just relies on text messaging or email, mm-hmm. like maybe for the younger generation of customers that works, but for the people that are in their 60s and 70s, it's still going to be a phone call. It's still going to be a personal visit. And so that person buying that book of business may have to change the way in which they conduct themselves yep. to continue to have those relationships. That's a big part of the learning curve. Oh yeah. And one thing, and I, you and Ryan will really appreciate this concept. A lot of people think real estate is an event mm-hmm. and it's not, it's a process. You guys know what you go through for an event. You're in the midst of that right now because you're in event season and mm-hmm. you know, we're getting ready to do base camp you're doing a site visit for Summit, and in between there, you've got NAR. Mm-hmm. So you know you do preparation, you you execute, and then you go next. That's not what real estate is. That's to right. successfully sell the book of business, it's not going to be an event. It's going to be a process. Yeah. It's going to be a an experience. It's going to be a relationship. And I think that's going to be the key mindset mm. for the millennial, is for the either the Y or the Z to come on board and say, Hey, this is not one and done. Yeah. You cannot wipe your hands clean. You can't wipe your hands and say next. Yeah. It's, it's going to be, we've got to be in relationship, which means you got to dot the I's, you got to cross the T's and you've got to do a good darn job in customer service. Yeah. But I, I think this is your guys's hope with these generations. I'm going to speak for me too. We want convenience, right? That's what we strive for. Right you're laying out a book of business on the table. So the, they just have to pick up the other part of it. They have to learn the customer service side of it. They have to learn the building the relationship side of things. But like, in my opinion, the hardest part's over. Well, and they're, they're able to, if they're able to commit to being coached and learn those exactly. types of yeah. things, they're literally leapfrogging their success. Correct. So this agent may have spent 20 or 30 years building that book of business this agent can now acquire that book of business and have immediate yep. long-term success, like yeah. short-term and long-term success. But if they don't adjust their tactics to the way that book of business has been handled to mm-hmm. date, then it might fall flat. Yeah, it's rendered useless. Right. But here, here's how it works. It's, it's a remix. And I want you to think whether it's Motown and a new artist coming in or Elton John Oh, like, in a new- yeah, like Elton John and Dua Lipa. Right. Okay, that, yeah. okay, yes. that's the perfect example. That was a good one, huh, Ryan? Well good, done. Good job, good job. <laughs> um, you hear it and you go, oh, I know this. And you start singing it and you go, oh, man, what is that? Who, who is that? Mm-hmm. What is that? That remix of you take that sound that you go, man, this is one of my favorite songs. It couldn't get any better. And then you go, it just got better. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's the intention of this is, man, I had this great experience with Kathy wow, this is better yeah. because of the technology, because right. of the, the ease and the elegance is at an elevated rate because the old dog learned a new trick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's the, that's the key. It is a remix. When can we see this? Am I allowed to ask that? Yeah. <laughs> it's. I don't want to put you on the spot. I'm um, sorry. Q4. Oh. Um, we, we will be ready at the end of base camp. Okay. To let it rock and roll. I mean, that's very exciting for those that are listening. I mean, that's, 
I know I asked you this on a previous episode, but are there other brands that are doing, I, I'm sure that something similar, but have you guys seen something of this magnitude from another brokerage? Not that I'm aware of. No. I mean, like, I mean, or I, I should say on, on the level of our companies, like scale. I, I mean, I, I, I'm not aware of other brands that necessarily have a dedicated program like exactly. this that we're developing. Yeah. That's specifically geared towards this segment yeah. of real estate professionals. And I think that that's what makes it unique. Yeah. I, it, it, it really is some blue ocean. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's saying, you know, and other, other brands do a great job. I don't want to say anything negative about totally. other brands. They do a great job of team building mm -hmm. and other things. No one is saying, now that you've built it, what do you do with it? Yeah. And uh, protect to, your Bob. To, can I just say, I love that. That's, that's we just titled the, I think that's, that's, that's the title right that's there. It. There you go. But to frame the whole entire conversation, uh, you basically like we are, we're in a, we're in a pivotal place in uh, society, in the industry where you have a huge generation of workers that are retiring every single day. Right. And you have a whole new generation of workers that are joining the workforce for the first time in their lives. And so it's a very pivotal moment, I think in society where, and we are now launching this program, like, which is fantastic. I, I think the other side of this that hopefully will come to, to come to fruition as well is because of this program, agents that are getting started in the business mm -hmm. will really recognize the importance of building a strong sphere of influence. Very good point. Because now it, they understand that this truly is a marketable mm -hmm. asset that could become their retirement strategy or their exit strategy or however they choose to approach it. Yep. That's something that we've always taught agents to do, but I think that agents don't necessarily seem to look that far yeah. into the future when they're starting their business. And I think this really adds credence to the importance of doing that. An example of, of, of that is, you know, we had James Mitchner who was an mm -hmm. amazing guest yeah. um, on a previous podcast and He's been extremely successful, enjoyed great success, and he's ready to do different things. Right. And because he's got this transferable book of business, it's allowing him, and he's, what, 40? <laughs> we were trying to figure that out. I hope he's not around my age because that made me feel <laughs> yeah, he, he, oh, he is man. such a rock star. We, we really loved having him. Yeah, but see, he's, he's ready to go do something different mm -hmm. and something else. So it's, again, I think that um, that Y and Z generation, it's going to be just a gift. It, it honestly, it really sounds like it. And the, I want to bring up one more thing and I don't want to take up too much more of your guys' time, but Mark, you brought up a good point and we've, we've talked about this a lot is the agents that are still in the industry that went through 08 yes. and are going through what we're going through now. And they're going to figure it out when the market starts to shift in the other direction. This to me is, um, it, in my opinion, it would make me feel like I have a little bit of padding when shit hits the fan. Um, I don't feel like I'm scrambling. Um, I feel like I, not only do I have a book of business, I have the person whose book of business that was as a mentor to discuss, Hey, what was it like in 2008? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was it like uh, when interest rates were at 2.3% and people were selling homes in 24 hours? Like you almost are getting a mentor in and of itself because the book of business comes with it. It, it does. And, and, and it emphasizes a much greater point, which is the agents that I talk to that are the most successful right now while the market is down and agent transaction count is down and agents are struggling. Mm -hmm. The ones that are still consistently closing deals are the ones that have this book of business mm -hmm. that built it long before mm -hmm. the market shift and will continue to have it after the market shift. Those are the ones that have set themselves up for success, which just reinforces the importance of having this as your business strategy and real estate for the long term. Yeah. Not just because it allows you to have an asset to sell, but because it carries you through shifting markets. Like if you have a healthy sphere of influence, people buy and sell regardless of what's going on with the market. They have to right? in some cases or in many cases. And so the more relationships you have, the more consistent you are with your sphere of influence, the better you are you know, positioned to survive any market. It doesn't matter what's going on. Yeah. One thing I want to emphasize before we go is it's not a magic bullet. Mm -hmm. It's not miracle dust. There's work involved. Sure. Absolutely. And when the market's a little bit slow, Get your shit together. Yeah. I can't stress that enough. Get your contacts into your CRM. This is not something that's going to transfer if it's written on a cocktail napkin. Could you say CRM? I, I'm just. I'm trying to. Remember. I want to make sure I know what that is. <laughs> yeah, get your stuff together because if it's not transferable, it's not marketable, mm -hmm. and um, and that's going to be the key. There's going to be a lot of work, and we're prepared to do that. The program is very strategic in helping 
you know, the front part is we're going to make sure you've got you've got it together so that it's marketable, and then, you know, find, helping you find that buyer, yeah, um, helping the our affiliates to make sure that it's a system that they don't walk away from market share and they don't have to constantly recreate the right. the wheel, and it is an attraction factor. Mm-hmm. It, it, I just want to reemphasize what you just brought up is if you have any free time at all, whether you don't have free time at all, if you're listening to this podcast, if you don't have a CRM right now, and I don't really like, we have an amazing CRM with one suite. It's an awesome tool. We give it to our real estate professionals. I I don't really care what CRM you use as long as you use a CRM. Right. Because what we're talking about here doesn't work if you don't have a CRM. Like you've got to have your clients somewhere where you're maintaining those relationships long-term and it has to be automated. It has to be systematized. If you don't have that, you're way behind the eight ball. Mm-hmm. Let's so. just say it right now. There's a prerequisite for one legacy. You have to have a CRM. Is that fair? Yeah. Yes. I mean, I think it's a must. I mean, and, and I guess that could be a spreadsheet, but that doesn't necessarily <laughs> work as well. Don't so, tell Savog that. No, I understand. <laughs> no, that was but a I mean, buzzword for him. Yes. <laughs> um, well, this program sounds seriously spectacular. I, I mean, I think it's something that, from a marketing standpoint, that's great material for us. Uh, yeah. From an agent standpoint, it sounds like it's a, you know, you're just serving them a meatball to hit out of the park if they can. Um, Absolutely. And so I love it. And so be on the lookout. This thing's rolling out. It is. It's rolling Q4. out. And what I can't wait is for us to be sitting here and have a guest yes. that successfully I've, does. I've thought of the exact same thing. That's next. Yes, that's next. So as always, Kathy, thank you so much. It's so good to see you thank in person. You. Mark, thank you for joining us. Every t- anytime. Yeah. So are we doing a tattoo in oh, Miami? <laughs> That's the question. I mean, I already have tattoos, so that is up to Ryan and Kathy. I, I got a tattoo on my right ankle now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. Okay. <laughs> we are. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. We thank you for joining us today on another episode of One on One, a Realty One Group podcast. We are powered by One.U and ask if you have suggestions, recommendations, or questions, please email learning at realtyonegroup.com. And remember, pay close attention to the details, listen to understand, not respond, and always be a resource, not a sales pitch.